Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another review and today I'm taking a look at the high-grade Nyuren from Kyokai Senki or Amim Warrior at the Borderline. So before we get into this review, of course this was sent to me by Hobby Link Japan, so if you want one of your own link down there in the description. And if you are sleeping on these kits, I say stop, wake up now, these are so so good. They blow my mind every single time. This is modern Bandai high grade quality, as in we haven't seen a proper Gundam kit quite like this yet. Can you believe we haven't really seen a new line of high grade Gundam kits in a long time? The last thing we would have seen that's pretty much new-ish would have been the Nightingale sometime last year and before that would have been the Death Side which did borrow some parts from older kits. But as for a full high grade line, it's been a while. I'm looking forward to whatever the hell we get from the Witch from Jupiter or whatever it's called. Is it Jupiter? Mercury? Mercury. It's Mercury, isn't it? Anyway, let's get right into the review. So first off, a brief mention on the build. Mind-blowing is an understatement. These are so well engineered and it does make sense. Visually, this right here is designed by the awesome Ipe Gyobu. He's the guy who did Moon Gundam. A whole lot of cool suits from Iron-Blooded Orphans, including the Kimars, Kimars Vidar, and something that looks kind of similar to this, the EO Frame Shiden. The plastic on this is superb, it requires very little cleanup. Everything clips together in such a cool way because, once again, these are designed by Ken Okayama Design, as well as the masters at Bandai themselves and everything just clipped together in a very unique kind of way. This is not like a, well, any kind of robot kit I've ever put together before. We've got so much going on here, the engineering is perfect, the detailing is crisp, I mean, this plastic is gorgeous. Treat yourself, get one, it is worth it, so cool. Anyway, aesthetics time. So jumping right on into the aesthetics, and there's the full 360 spin, so you can see every angle yourself to decide on whether or not you like this. Now uh, the first thing I have to mention is, I am blown away by the detail on this, and I mean the sharpness of the mold. Now this is incredible, and it is something we've been seeing in the Kyokai Senki line so far, but here, I'm not sure what it is, if it's the particular red plastic or what, but the definition to all of the panel lines, all of the detailing on here is mind-bendingly cool. Design-wise, it is very simple, there isn't too much exterior detail on it, but it all looks so crisp. Again, I'm going to mention that high grades that we've been seeing a lot, at least over the last year, if not more, have a lot of recycled parts, so that means this, well, it's not current Bandai modern tech. This is, and it is crispy and beautiful. The new Ren right here features a lot of very unique aspects that I've never seen on a model kit robot before. The first of which is we've got some pretty cool reversed joint legs. They look very nice. I will mention when you build this, these are kind of assembled like the fine build system or a little bit like 30 minute missions kits. But the quality here is even higher than that of 30 minute missions. Now, we'll mention one aspect you might have noticed already, and I'll just point it out just in case, because my wife thinks the exact same thing. Its feet look like they're on backwards. I've tried flipping them around to see what they look like, and it doesn't really look that great, but that is a very unique design for the feet. Of course, the little flat segment round back does keep it upright very nicely when it is standing with the reversed limbed knees. However, unique looking. Like I mentioned already, the plastic on this is incredible. The red color is split up into two shades, a lighter one and a darker one, which looks very, very nice. And as for the other colors on here, everything, as far as I can see, is fully color accurate. We've got the white segment color separated inside of the visor. There is a little decal stuck on in there. We do get a sheet of decals for that particular area, as well as for some of the sensor segments. So that would be the shiny yellows you're seeing either side the head on those kick-ass Oni looking horns. Again, quite a throwback to the EO frame she did right here. The last color separated segment we have is the yellow sections either side of the head. Again, very impressive. Every color that you need to see on this particular robot right here is present and that is beautiful. Also, there is not really much in the lines of leftover knobs. Now, I built this very, very quickly. I just snipped it off the runner with one snip for most parts besides up on the head. So, if there was going to be some nubbage on this, there'd be some nubbage and I'm not seeing a whole lot. It's also that kind of soft plastic that if you just ran your fingernail over the nub mark, it completely disappears. The hands on this are incredibly designed as well. They've really, they haven't skipped out on anything. No corner is cut. 
This is a visual masterpiece. It is so, so nice. Honestly, I'm glad to be getting back into this line because I've left it for a little while and these things rock. Let's check out what it comes with. So now jumping into the accessories and here's the new Ren with absolutely everything that it comes with. This is a grunt suit and this is the perfect loadout for a grunt suit because we've got so many options in here. So even if you do get a squad of these guys, you can load them up a little bit different and make them all feel a little bit unique in their own way. First up in here, we do have a multitude of hands that is six in total. The first pair of hands we've seen through the entire review so far, that's a widespread pair of dynamic hands. They are a little bit on the flat side, but the detail is very cool. Next up then, you can use these as fists, but they're not necessarily fists. These are a pair of holding hands. These do have that color accuracy issue we've been seeing with these Kyokai Senki kits so far, and that is that half the fingers are in the red color, half are in gray. So that does mean you will have to paint the upper segments of the fingers in order for this to be perfect. This also does go for the ranged weapon holding hand, just like we would have seen already with Kembu. That finger right there is the same color as the back of the hand. It should be gray like the rest. So the first actual weapon we have in here is the rifle. According to the instructions, this is the main weapon used by Nuren models. It can be mounted on the back of the unit when it is not in use and it has a simple but sturdy structure. When it comes to the model kit right here, this looks fantastic. Once again, the mold is beautiful. This is made of three individual parts, not including the magazine, which is removable and we have two included. The only thing I would mention here is there is no hand that is capable of holding the magazine itself for some reloading poses, but it's still a fantastic addition. When this is not in use, just like the manual said, this can be mounted on the back. There's a tab just up on the top of this that kind of looks like it's iron sights that can be stuck into the back of the unit just like so simple, effective, and beautiful. This is what I like to see on a grunt. Moving through the weapons now, and we have the only melee weapon that we have in here, which is the axe. According to the instructions, this is a weapon for close combat. It can also be mounted on the back of the unit when not in use, just like the rifle. This looks great once again, very simple. We do have a mounting point very obviously on the back of it. And I will mention that the blade of this is meant to be in a lighter gray or silver. So you will need to actually paint that yourself if you want to. This is very simple, just pops on into the hand like this. Actually, if you disassemble the hand and pop it in, it looks even better. And when you're not using this, it can be stored just like the instruction says, round back, just like we did with the rifle. Once again, this locks in perfectly and looks great. Next up then in here is the shield. This is an additional piece of armor which can be equipped on the arm. Two additional magazines for the rifle can be attached to it. So yeah, just like it says there in the instructions, this is an extra piece of armor. And the one thing I have to say is I thought the underside of this would not come color separated, but these kits keep on impressing. So we've got three colors on here. That is the two tones of red and the gray on the underside. And just like it said in the instructions as well, you can attach two of the magazines included in here. There's only two in here, by the way, onto the underside. We also have a rotating peg in between those. And I'll just mention that there are hard points for attaching the shield, both on the inside and outside of the forearm. This, I assume, is because both arms are completely symmetrical. So there's holes on either side, but maybe we'll see some expansion parts in future or you can just get creative. This is a beautiful shield. So next up in here, we've got the pair of missile containers. Once again, the instruction says this is an additional weapon which is used by equipping it on one arm. It houses one large missile, which can be fired. When it comes to the actual model kit right here, this is phenomenal again, just like the rest of the quality of this model kit right here. We've got three different colors. That is the darker red. We've got the gray and we also have some white for the missile. They really did color separate everything out on this and the missile inside is got perfect, awesome detail. It's a full missile. This attaches on simply by pretty much attaching onto what is the elbow. This holds on perfectly. We've got an opening hatch in the end. Now I will mention these can fall off quite easily. So do be careful with these that you don't lose them. But besides that, these are phenomenal, can also be equipped when the shield is on. So once again, these have been designed so, so well. So jumping right on into the articulation on this, and I have to say I am blown away once again by the build of this. There is no poly cap, so it's just plastic on plastic everywhere, and this is solid as a rock. So even though it does say high grade on the box, when you pop off the head and see the neck joint in here, this is not standard high grade quality. They've upped the level here. This is not just a double ball joint. We also have a hinge in the center of this. 
So when the head is attached, we've got a whole lot to the front and a lot of side to side, but it is a little bit blocked to the back because of the big old back of head that this thing has, but otherwise impressive. Continuing along, we have a forward and back moving joint in the torso connecting to the shoulder. The shoulder is a ball joint, so we've got the full shoulder roll, full 360 degree spin, a up and down moving hinge inside of the shoulder, allowing it to move up all the way up and all the way down, full rotation in the upper arm. The elbow bend in here is a little bit on the limited side, but when you actually add it to the rest of the articulation, this does not hold it back at all. We've got a second full rotation then at the upper forearm, a very, very nice pivot for the hand to move on, which brings it a full 180 degrees. And then we've got the standard ball joint then at the wrist. Moving down now to the torso and we have this armor triangle at the front that can move up and down to move out of the way of the ab crunch. The ab crunch is very, very nice. And we also have a ball joint in here as well for some side to side and body roll. On top of that, then we've got the full 360 degree spin right here. Moving down onto the legs at the hip, inside of the hip, we actually have a forward and back rocking motion, which gives us a lot of options here. There's the kick all the way up to the front. It can go up really high, but it will start to move outwards due to the curvature of the upper body. There it is all the way out to the back, so quite a lot. And this can also pull off the full splits without an issue. We have nearly the full spin at the upper leg. It is blocked by the armor lip at the front. We have a double jointed knee bend in here. The first one is just a bit of a hinge that moves up and down like so. The next one is a full on knee bend that swings around like this. We have a very nicely designed ankle in here. That's a ball joint up top. Then we have a side to side pivot down in the foot as well as a forward and back pivot. As for what this gets us when we test out the functional movement on the ground, there is the full range of forward to back movement and there's the full range of side to side movement. So a little bit more limited than the technology has in here because of the amount of armor. So yeah, once again, just like this entire range, the articulation in here is so well engineered, so well designed, everything is rock solid, and it is just so much fun to pose. It also moves like pretty much no other model kit out there does. This feels and looks great and can pull off pretty much any pose that you want out of it. And what can I say? I am once again impressed. When it comes to the high-grade Nuren from Kyokai Senki, this is another absolutely ridiculous high-grade that feels even better than, well, most high-grades out there. The plastic quality in here is insane, beautiful to work with, beautiful to look at, and the detail on here is spectacular. The mold is just so sharp. When it comes to the accessories in here, we've got a little armory, which is very, very nice. That is a long range weapon, close range weapon, and some options, including a shield and two missile launchers. So if you do buy a few of these, which I highly recommend, you can outfit your squad a little bit differently. Also, I will mention when it comes to the articulation, this thing is incredible. Rock solid, plastic on plastic joints, no poly caps, and it just looks incredible from every angle. I love these kits, and I love this one too. Honestly, when it comes to high-grade grunt kits, this is platinum tier. No joke. Anyway, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more model kit reviews. And as always, I will see you next time. As always, this video and none of these videos would be possible without each and every one of you watching these videos, including those of you who are supporting me on the channel memberships and over on Patreon, including... Van Fon, Orgy59061, Lawrence Seahack, Kill Me Inc., Joseph Kukluk, Joe, Gunpla UK Limited, Global Frequency Studios, Forsetti, Caleb Engelhart, and Craig Jerry.